Hello guys, in one of my courses on Laravel Daily.com I received this question. The course is about structuring Laravel projects in general and the question is where to return the error if something goes wrong somewhere internally. For example, in a service class or in action class or somewhere internally. Should it return the error, for example, if you work with API? So should it abort the script right there and then? or should it throw an exception and how to catch that exception? And I decided to quickly create a demo and shoot it as a YouTube video. And by the way, I receive more and more comments on Laravel Daily.com courses and premium tutorials. So this could be a good tradition. Take questions from there and shoot them as answers on YouTube videos. So here's a quick demo of API. It was a really quick one, so not really realistic scenario, but I will explain. So for example, you want to store a new user. And by the way, I apologize for my voice. It's still a bit shaky because I have some illness, but I hope you don't mind because I think the content is more important than the quality of my voice. Anyway, you have some kind of service to store data like user service, create the user from controller data. And inside of that user service, again, it's extremely simplified and I wouldn't do exactly that in real projects. But anyway, imagine any service that would do something with data and there is some kind of validation. Again, in real life scenarios, probably majority of the validation should happen somewhere in the controller or form request classes. But if something goes wrong in the service, what should this line be? So if something is invalid, should you abort right there and then, or should you throw an exception? And then how should controller react here? Should there be try catch? So let's take a look how it works actually. In the postman, if I launch that users create endpoint with some data with example com which is invalid and send that i get the result of 400 status code bad request with please no example com emails which is thrown by service so abort 400 right there and then and then it doesn't even return to the controller it just aborts kind of like hard exit and it actually works so there's nothing really wrong here and that's one of the examples how to structure Laravel projects and that's what my course is about that there are millions of ways well not millions but I mean dozens of ways how to structure things in Laravel and they all pretty much work so it's just your personal preference but if you want to be more consistent and the code to be more maintainable with fewest amount of surprises you should not do a board in some external i mean internal classes like actions or services you should throw exceptions why because that service potentially could be called from elsewhere that's the point of those service action and similar classes to be called from controllers maybe from jobs maybe from automated tests if there's a unit test testing that service so not necessarily it should be aborted. It should be decided by the controller or by whoever called that service. So instead of abort, you should do throw new exception. It may be general exception. It may be something like validation exception. It may be your own custom exception. That's your personal preference. But let's just do copy and paste here. So that's how it should be. And then in the controller, you should catch that exception. So if we launch that code now in Postman, what do we have? 500 internal server error. That's a different status code because the exception happened. The controller didn't do anything with that. And if that happens, Laravel will throw general 500 error with your message. In this case, it's a validation error. So you should probably mark that as validation with try catch and returning that with different status code. So it should look something like try, then call that internal service, and then catch. If there's some exception, let's catch the same exception, exception. Then in here, you decide what to return in case of that exception happening. So in here, you may return JSON, or in here, you may abort 400 with exception message. That message could come from the service, but it should be processed by the controller. So now if we launch in Postman, it's almost the same thing. The message is the same. And if the front end client doesn't care about status code, it cares only about the message, it wouldn't make much difference. But in many cases, front enders do care if it's a 400, which means validation and something is wrong with request and 500, which means the server did a bad job somewhere. 
In fact, there's almost a joke or a meme on the internet. What are those status codes? So as a client, as a front end or calling that API, if I get 400, then it means that I screwed up somewhere with bad data request. If it's 500, then the server screwed up somewhere. So that may be really important. What status code do you return? So yeah, this is just a very simple example. And in fact, that should be not a string, it should be a number. I'm not sure why I put it as a string here. Anyway, I hope you get something to think about from my simplified example, how to apply that in your projects. If you disagree with something or you do it another way, please share in the comments below. As I said, Laravel allows you multiple ways to implement similar things. That's kind of the best and the worst thing about Laravel, to be honest. So we have stuff to discuss in the comments, right? And if you want more stuff to discuss about how to structure Laravel projects on Laravel Daily, this is the course that I'm talking about. And there is a whole separate tag called how to structure Laravel project. It's also a course about solid and then my videos and tutorials about how to structure projects, including modules, repositories, services, and more articles. So I will link that list of articles and courses in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.